languages, some grammatical categories will be uh, more frequent than others. So the more frequent categories are necessarily less marked. So within the category of number, what I've outlined here is a hierarchy of markedness. The least marked form in a number category is the singular. It is very seldom in languages. Uh, in fact, it has to be a special case if you have a singular marker, but not a plural marker. Okay. Usually the singular marker is zero, but then you have a plural marker. Um, um, this hierarchy of number, focal and trial. Focal means several, uh, trial means number of three. Okay. No. Dual indicates two, so in English an old dual is reflected in both. English used to have Germanic languages used to have dual. Uh, Slavic languages used to have dual. The only Slavic language that has preserved this dual is Slovene. Slovene. Yeah. Um, and then the plural and the singular. On that hierarchy, why, why is this called the hierarchy? Well, if a language has focal and trial number, it will have the rest. Okay. It is not the case that if you will have dual, you'll necessarily have plural and singular, but it's not certain you have focal and trial. Okay. And the more you go to the right end, the more marking you, you will expect, or it will be very special forms. Okay. Um, less marked forms will be also frequent in texts. And that, that is usually independent of genre. And they will also be pragmatically neutral, so you can use them um, in any context, um, whereas marked forms will be pragmatically um, not neutral and marked, so you can, they are restricted to either formal register or in informal register, there will be some specification. Okay. Like um, the form quos in English is marked big time because you can only use it in um, um, some very special circumstances. Brethren is also a, a marked form. A by its plural, B by its ablaut, ablaut, and then, it, yeah, as I said, it is restricted to prayers, it is restricted to jokes, so it is restricted to some solemn speech situations, but they're all very special situations. I can just not, not go and say, well, hello, my brethren, and be serious about it, because people are not going to take me seriously. They will know that I am, I'm putting in something else. So this is what's meant like, by pragmatic criteria. Um, I've given the examples of pig and piglet here. Okay? Uh, that's, that's when you open any textbook, on uh, marketness, pig and pig, if it's an English based, if it's written in English, pig and piglet will come up. Uh, well, a pig, I mean, you can talk about a pig, right? Yeah. Uh, but, and it can also, a pig will, can also be a piglet, but you don't specify it as small. So the size and the age are unspecified in pig. But in piglet, those are specified. So, in this sense, piglet is semantically more marked than pig. Okay? Um, the same with tenses. In a system like the Germanic one, the present tense, and uh, as we shall see, it's also the case cross linguistically, the present tense, uh, it is also the semantically unmarked tense. There are situations where the present tense can be used to narrate events of the past. But 
you cannot use the past tense to relate events of the present unless you want to imply something. Okay? In Swedish, you can use past tense forms for the present, but then you're extremely formal. And that is a, that is a strategy used to distance yourself from the event and from your listeners. Okay? Uh, and that is also a marked strategy. Because the unmarked strategy is to use the present for everything. In, in, uh, in, in modern Swedish, you very frequently use the present to narrate events like what, whatever you were doing last night or what happened at the picnic or, or fa events that happened very fast. Uh, like I, when I listen to the narratives like the daycare teachers give me what my daughter did and did not do, they're all in the present, but they did happen that day. They're all, all they, the, the teachers use present tense. They're all sweet uh, and the events they are telling me about are already in the past. They've already happened. So that's the unmarked strategy. The marked strategy is when you want to be overtly polite. Um, if we